Greetings, everyone! This is Spot. And this is Wasteland 2. Now, I'm not absolutely sure that I'm gonna do, like, a long series on this. Uh, this completely depends on what people like. Um, I'm, I'm still kind of trying to get a feel for what my subscribers like in general, and so, um, I, and I'm pretty, pretty clear on the whole building thing, like, Nomoria and Space Base and Prison Architect. That's that's pretty, you know, good stuff. But there's only so much of that stuff. Wasteland 2 is the actual follow-up to the original legendary Wasteland, um, which is actually like the game that um, was a heavy inspiration, if not the inspiration, for uh, games like Fallout and other post-apocalyptic games, etc. Blah, blah, blah. It's a role-playing game, and... Uh, pretty story driven there's some sandboxiness to it i've played about three hours of this to try to get a feel when i played the three hours i actually used the pre-made rangers so this time though i thought it might be actually fun to do some custom stuff so okay combat skills will increase your proficiency with different weapons they affect stats like your chance to hit critical hit chance reload cost and jam rate uh allocate your available attribute points all right so this can be a bit uh odd and so i'm actually going to spend some time going through all this because i want all of you guys to understand and gals to understand what each of these things does so that you can take part uh comment etc so um but i'll go through them quickly uh coordination a ranger with high coordination has grace a deft touch and fine motor skills coordination helps avoid traps and attacks pick locks and improve aim um Currently, we've got three in this. Uh, luck. Some rangers just seem to have an innate edge. Bullets miss them. Their attacks always seem to find their enemy's weak spot, and they always seem to find more loot than anybody else. Uh, critical hit chance, chance to evade, chance to get additional con, etc. Okay. Awareness. A ranger with high awareness notices every detail of the world around them. They are hard to ambush or sneak up on, and are often able to get a jump on their enemies. So they get better initiative, for example, and chance to evade. Strength. A ranger with high strength is able to hit hard, carry more gear, take more damage, recover more quickly from injury, and use heavy weapons. Speed. Speed is more than just how fast a ranger can run. It is also their reflexes and reaction time, which affects their initiative in battle. The higher ranger speed, the sooner they can act. So, hey, affects initiative and etc. Uh, intelligence. Intelligence allows a ranger to learn and process information efficiently, giving them early access to a wide variety of skills and the ability to master them quickly. Uh, and then charisma. is charisma's combined for, uh, force of a ranger's personality and desirability. Uh, people react more favorably to a ranger with high charisma and might talk about things they would have otherwise kept to themselves. Uh, intelligence is a very interesting one, by the way, uh, because you will notice uh, skill points per level, right? So, skill points per level, which is right here, is two. Now, these are skills that we haven't gone into yet, uh, which we have 12 to, to assign. But the interesting thing about this one here is that you know every time you level, you get two of these skill points. Well, if you up your intelligence, just one here, you pop this up to four, you now get three. Now, you have to pop this up significantly, get this up around here, you get four. Four of these skill points for every level. If you get all the way to the top, you have excellent intelligence, you get five skill points per level. So every single level you can put five skill points, which is actually really awesome. However, you are burning pretty much all of your available attribute points to start. Um, now, it also uh, impacts your action points. So if we come back down here, Action points are six, going all the way up, they they go to eight. And action points are what you would expect. It's firing a weapon, reloading a weapon, switching weapon, moving, etc. Pretty much any type of action. Um, they don't get as far down as to breathing, but, uh, you know, higher than that, if it's, if it's an actual intended action, then that's the thing. So, these matter, and it just depends on what type of uh, character we're going to build. Now, as the leader... Of the group we need leadership right and 
I'm, I'm going to hit this one first because it matters. A true leader is made, not born. With this skill, you will inspire others to trust and follow you. Use this power only for good. Okay, first, your companion NPCs will listen to your orders more often and go rogue less. It's important. Second, your presence instills confidence in your team, increasing their chance to hit when they're near you, which is really awesome. Um, and it's pretty good range, actually. So, Animal Whisperer, it's what you would expect, right? If you run into animals, they, they're they less likely to attack you. Uh, they might even join you, etc. Barter's what you would expect. Um, lowers cost of things. Uh, raises sell prices. Brute Force, used on objects in the world that can be bashed, broken, pushed, or unstuck. Hard Ass. Now, um, Hard Ass, Kiss Ass, and Smart Ass are actually... Uh, personality types that affect from what I've been able to tell thus far conversation so the skill is usable yeah in conversations keywords with corresponding icons will appear when you have enough rank and hard ass to use it kiss ass is the same way and smart ass is the same way now the thing about this is that this is this is not you shouldn't you shouldn't go into this thinking uh oh, okay, well, I'm going to make a hard-ass character, so I'm going to put everything in, in a hard-ass. It's not... I mean, you can, that's fine. But it's it's not just how good you are at it, and that's how effective you will be. Certain... Each NPC in the game has a specific, uh, we will say, resistance to each of these. Um, and some of them, like, if you kiss their ass, it works amazingly. And then some, if you do, that will actually cause bad things to happen. Because, uh, you know, they feel they're being manipulated or something like that. Uh, it's the same thing w w with the others. So, uh, this isn't just a, a straightforward linear thing. It, it sometimes uh, helps to mix them. Uh, outdoorsman. Uh, this is kind of an interesting one. The outdoorsman skill is primarily used to avoid random encounters while traveling on the world map. So, in this game, as you'll see, there's, there's like local areas and there's a world map which you travel on and it takes a certain amount of time and water and things like that and as you travel there's a percentage chance that you're going to run into a random encounter and then you have to do a fight uh, the higher your outdoorsman uh, is the lower that chance is perception skills used to highlight objects of interest in the wasteland drawing your attention to hidden traps alarms and other secrets uh, hovering your cursor over an item will also trigger a check Select this skill to see a visual of your perception range. Yeah, what's really cool is that if you turn this on... Actually, is that... Was oh, that only a visual of your perception range? I thought that actually turned it on. Anyway, when you click this as a skill on a character that has it, you actually see like a radial line, like a circle around that character. And when uh, the, the line gets... You know, when something gets inside the line because you've walked up to it or walked near it, um, it, it will sparkle or to do something that lets you know. Um, it seems that, that that's actually always the case, th but clicking it just shows you that line, which is cool. Okay, that's that's good to know. Um, smart ass we went into already. Uh, what weapon smithing? Weapon smithing allows you to install a wide variety of modifications to your weapons. You may also use it to strip a weapon down, potentially gaining a useful mod in the process. Um... I haven't been able to use this yet. One of my characters that I had played with before, I, I, I got him weaponsmithing uh, up to like level two, but I never actually got a weapon yet that I think you could install a mod to. I got some mods, but I never got a weapon you could install to. So I'm not sure exactly how that works, but I think it's probably straightforward. All of these should be pretty straightforward. Assault rifles, blader weapons, blunt weapons, brawling, energy weapons, handguns, heavy weapons, shotguns, sniper rifles, submachine guns. If this is all looking familiar, if you've played Fallout 3, for example, uh, a lot of this stuff is going to look familiar. Uh, knowledge skills. Alarm disarming. Computer science, which is actually really important, and it's amazing that they used a five and a quarter inch floppy as an icon. Awesome. Uh, demolitions. This one is a bit uh, misleading if you don't read it. Allows a player to disarm a variety of different explosives. This skill is primarily used to deactivate booby traps. So this, if I just saw this, I would think, oh, they can use explosives and plant them well. And actually, no, this has more to do with their ability to um, unplant them. Uh, field Medic. Field Medic restores hit points and removes effects of using consumable items. This action is available both in and out of combat. Lock picking, obvious. Mechanical repair. Um, repair small appliances, engines, and gizmos. Safe cracking. Interestingly enough, Lock picking and safe cracking are different skills. Safe cracking is used to open vaults and safes. These normally contain special goods and items locked away for safekeeping. Uh, surgeon. The surgeon skill is used to revive downed party members, both in and out of combat. Additionally, it can be used to remove any status effects gained from injuries. 
So, um, I actually have a doctor-ish character on my previous team uh, who had field medic and surgeon, and after like three hours of playing, never had used surgeon, only field medic. Uh, toaster repair, which is quite interesting. Um, <laughs> very specialized and underappreciated skill in a world without toast, but sometimes surprisingly useful. Use toaster repair on any broken toasters you come across in your travels. You never know what you might find inside. Now, I don't have any characters that have toaster repair. I just, I couldn't, you know, get myself to spend points on it. But um, I have found, like, two toasters. Couldn't do anything with them, obviously. But yeah, here's the deal. I don't like Let's Play series where there it's a role-playing game like this and they spend the entire first episode just building out characters. Um, which, it'll probably end up being that. But what, what I'm going to do is, I wanted to go through this stuff here with everyone so that you knew what it all looked like. Can I go back here? Yes, let's leave this. Okay. We have four rangers. One of them needs to be a leader, so it's got to be high on the leader's go. Personally, I like to put um, most of my barter and communication skills in my leader, right? So, for instance, I was using Slick here because he, he's he's the negotiator, right? So he's got, he's got barter skills and other stuff and blah, blah. Um, we are going to need... Obviously, a healer of some kind, and probably a tech person that can do uh, computer hacking and other things in that area, right? Then we probably need someone that's just mi mainly like a soldier character that's like brute force. Blah, blah. Um, to be honest, let's see. Pills is who I chose for my medic, and Hex is was my uh, software person. And I also got Widow O'Neill instead of a soldier specifically, but she, she's a jack of all trades. Uh, Cherry Bomb, I, I haven't used any of these others, and so, um, yeah. Now, also one thing we can do, just to let you know, is that we can also um, take one of these. So, we can take, like, Slick, for example, right? We can do Negotiator, right? And then we can go over here and we can actually modify him. As far as, in fact, I'm just going to show these work here. So, pills, um, hex. I'll show these. So, here's pills. So, here's her stats. Uh, hex, right? So, I'm not going to pick any of these others. But, so, you guys have seen what the skills are, what the attributes are, these base templates, okay? What I would like is I would like for to, to get comments from you guys about... Um, how you think we should shape these characters. Um, we can just call these like one, two, three, and four. And what attributes and skills you think that we should focus on. Now, obviously, as they level up, uh, you get more skill points. Um, I, I think you might get attribute points at some point, but in three hours of playing, I never got another attribute point. But I'm sure you do at some point. But you do definitely get skill points. So what we pretty much need to decide is um, starting skill points where we want to focus their their stuff. So in the next episode, I'll look at what everyone says, and then I'll pretty much have them laid out already, and then I'll just go over them real quick, and then we can go into the game. So, awesome. Uh, yeah, that's about it. This is kind of a weird way to do it. I know it's not usually done this way. Usually people just go through and they just spend an entire 30 or 40 minutes setting up characters, but I just didn't really want to do that, and I wanted to get more um, feedback f from you guys to, to get your opinions on things. Just remember it's a post-apocalyptic world right and so you're gonna have that type of stuff in it there so awesome thanks everybody thanks for your time and uh, uh i will look forward to putting out another episode of this or actually a first episode of this yeah okay until next time stay safe have a fantastic time and i look forward to hearing from you Hey everybody, this is Spot. Thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. I hope you liked it. If you do, please give me a like. Subscribe if you'd like, leave a comment. I actually read all of them. So yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot.